There are few calisthenic skills that tick as many boxes as the L-sit does. The flexion at the hip at near end range while keeping the legs straight requires a decent amount of mobility and doing all of this while still understanding how to press with straight arms and depressed scapula, particularly if you're performing the L-sit on the floor. This makes it a perfect skill for calisthenics athletes to develop early into their journey towards learning other, more advanced movements, but frustratingly, the L-sit is a skill that some get in minutes and others it takes months to achieve. So if you can't do an L-sit, today we'll walk through the likely reasons why and understand how you can learn how to L-sit. How are you doing Cali Cloud? Welcome back to the channel that makes calisthenics simple. Jumping straight into it, let's talk about the role that flexibility plays in the L-sit. Pike flexibility, so the capacity we have to fold forwards and touch your toes will, to a point, be a factor in our ability to L-sit, but it is not the be-all and end-all. In fact, if you can simply sit on the floor in an L-shape, this is all the range you will need in the hamstrings to perform an L-sit. Transferring from this passive position to the active hold of an L-sit is difficult though. So if you need to develop your flexibility to get to this point, I have a full video detailing exactly how you can do this. Check the link in the description or click on the card. While flexibility is important and may be limiting your L-sit potential, understand that the L-sit is still primarily a strength skill with the focus particularly on the hip flexors and on that point actually let's talk about the elephant in the l-shaped room which is how to deal with l-sit cramps the strength demands of the l-sit are largely placed on the hip flexors with specific emphasis on the quads the quadriceps have many roles and the l-sit demands them to do almost all of them at the same time flex the hip extend the legs adduct the legs medially rotate the leg all while at end range of flexion this is a lot and the cramps we experience are a direct result of us putting an unfamiliar challenge on our muscles. They have no idea how to deal with the stress and so they simply just seize up. If cramps are stopping you from doing an L-sit, there is no way around it. We simply have to push through, but we can still be intelligent about how we do that. Creating familiarity is key here and we can build up our capacity much in the same way that we would with any other exercise that we're struggling with by regressing the movement. Fighting to spend two or three seconds in a crappy L-sit is not a good use of time. Instead, doing an easier version for significantly longer periods of time will allow for more time under tension that we can build on as we get stronger. Shortening the lever by bending the legs or elevating ourselves so that our legs rest below the line of our hips is a great way to do this. It then becomes obvious with how we can progress as we learn how to L-sit. I find the excuse of my legs are too heavy a non-issue when it comes to the L-sit and I'll happily and unapologetically call it an excuse because the legs are the main drivers of this skill. Having large quads should be a good thing when it comes to this movement and much in the same way that if somebody had a huge back and couldn't do pull-ups, what is the point in all that muscle if we cannot master our own body? Finally, we come to the length of our arms. Many will find that they can do L-sit on parallettes or dip bars long before they can L-sit on the floor. This is another piece that we've discussed on the channel before, but by understanding where our hands cross the bottom of our leg in any seated position, we can make sense of where our hands should be in an L-sit. This becomes harder once we start to layer on our entire body weight into this movement. And while we may be able to fight and keep our arms straight throughout the whole process, where people typically struggle is in maintaining depression at the scapula. This small movement from here to here can be enough to make us feel like our arms will just never be long enough to L-sit. So take the time to practice holding a depressed scapula position. We can do this with scapular dips on dip bars, or we can make this more specific to the L-sit by tweaking scapular dips in an L-sit position. Either way, push for as much distance between your ears and your shoulders as possible. Crowd, these are the main reasons why you may be finding the L-sit so hard to perform. But if you're looking to see how I learned how to L-sit as the first skill I ever did in calisthenics, then check out this video.